10 times biggest breakfast show, 94.5 KFM at 10 to 8. And what ought to be our final crossing to Ronnie Bull, our man on Everest. A return to Everest that we've been watching for the last two months on this show, brought to you in conjunction with Discovery Channel and DSTV. Ronnie Bull, good morning. Yes, talk to me. say it is a little bit of self-indulgence but I just absolutely love that and I hope you enjoyed and appreciated just what it's like to actually be on that little round dome of snow but you know we knew that that was only half halfway it was half of the journey because most of the accidents happen on the descent I'm convinced that as a result of my time there I'm, I, I'm more and more convinced that success is not an upward journey but a downward journey and I certainly learned that on Everest because of all those who head off for the summit and a whole lot of people never have the opportunity of actually pushing for the summit but those who do one in four finally make it and of those one in four who make it one in fifteen don't make it back down alive again 
And those are scary st- statistics. And so we were mindful of that. And, and, and although we were able to appreciate our time there, we knew that we had the descent ahead of us. And it's a tricky descent, and it's difficult to protect. And, it, and it's, it's really incredibly hard work as you become wasted as a human being, falling about the place and, 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 and just struggling to stay on your own two feet. Of course, our entire journey was going to be taking us about 20 hours from the time that we left at 9, 9 p.m. the night. We were getting down to a safe point at Camp 2 at about 5, 6 o'clock the following evening. We'd been on the go for 20, 21 hours, exhausted, absolutely finished. But somehow I managed to take in some of the views. They're breathtaking, even in that wasted, completely finished state. That was Makalu, one of the world's great mountains. And right in the background I could see base camp and, and just knew that I had to do everything in my power to get back down there. And, uh, and that was back in advanced base camp, 48 hours later. And it's amazing that once you've been on the summit and you start returning, things start happening incredibly quickly. And we were found ourselves back in Kathmandu. And of course, you know, being on a mountain like Everest, there aren't any certificates for climbing her. There aren't any medals that get given out. There are no trophies. But there's this wonderful restaurant known as the Rum Doodle. And at the Rum Doodle, it's a three-tiered restaurant. What you're allowed to do is, is sign your name on the wall. And as you walk up the first stairwell, what awaits you is all these famous signatures. Edmund Hillary, Reinhold Messner, Chris Bonington, all these famous climbers. And now, Ronnie Moore. Sorry, I just thought I'd put that in. Uh, but you, know, you, get, you get given the opportunity of actually signing this board. And they authenticate that you did in fact summit and, and they put this board up behind glass. It's a very special thing to be able to, to do. But there's, there's something else about the rum doodle that's really special. Is that they issue you with a summiteer's card. This happens to be mine. Uh, and what this allows you to do is you can visit the rum doodle and eat for free for the rest of your life. Isn't that incredible? I figured I just bought myself some insurance. I mean, what incredible insurance is this? I mean, if, if things get tough back in Southern Africa, I mean, I just need to get myself to Kathmandu. I don't know how I'm going to feed my family, but I can certainly feed myself. I suppose we take doggy bags out, you know. Anyway, so a wonderful thing to do. And, 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 and so our Sherpas and I, we celebrated and, and we, we stuck up our, our little footprint in one of the stairwells, which was just... Our, our certificate to ourselves for, for finally having done that. And there it is. And I've received one or two emails of fellow friends who've been to Kathmandu and have actually spotted it there. It's a, it's a great thing. Uh, and that's our certificate for having actually achieved what we did, which was really amazing. And so, in conclusion, I would like to say that you know I'm, I'm, I'm critically aware that for a lot of you, you're all facing your own Everest. I think for some of us, getting up in each and every day is a bit of a mini Everest all of its own. I'm under no illusion that there are probably a lot of you sitting here that are facing huge challenges. Challenges in terms of your business, perhaps your family, your relationships. Maybe you have problems with children. And, and, and in many ways, these are Everests all of their own. There's a woman author back home who to be the base camp manager of one of the South African expeditions a number of years ago and she wrote a wonderful book called I've Climbed Everest So You Don't Need To. And so I'd like to share that with you as well. I've been there and not everybody wants to do this. I just physically wanted to find myself there. But there are many, many challenges that each and every one of us face on a daily basis. And the Tibetans have a wonderful saying and I want to leave that saying with you. And that is Tashi Delek. I want to say Tashi Delek to each and every one of you as you go out and face your own Everest. Luck be with you. Luck be with you on that journey. So, buckle up that harness, make sure it's tight, and go to it. Thank you very much.